Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaUrbanGarden.ca. If you're into organic gardening and are on one of the many online communities, you've no doubt seen uh, product claims about the use of Epsom salt in the garden and the variety of benefits that it can bring. As you know, I've been putting garden practices and claims to the test to see which ones are supported by science and which ones are not. For example, the science behind the use of coffee grounds in the garden is supported, whereas the use of cold coffee as a fertilizer and to lower the pH around your blueberries is not. Today we're going to see if Epsom salt really is good for your garden. Epsom salt is made up of magnesium sulfate and when dissolved in water releases magnesium and sulfur into the soil. Magnesium and sulfur are both essential elements for plant growth and production. Magnesium plays a key role in chlorophyll, and sulfur plays a key role in amino acids. Because magnesium and sulfur play such a key role in your plant's growth, it would seem logical that having more magnesium and sulfur in your soil would help your plants and support these claims, right? Let's talk about a few of these claims and for the purpose of discussion, focus on magnesium. The large-scale industrial production of crops like tomatoes, watermelons, and grapes use very taxing growth techniques, such as irrigation and the use of synthetic fertilizers. Irrigation has been linked to advanced nutrient leaching that can cause magnesium deficiencies. Deficiencies can cause yellowing of leaves, reduced leaf numbers, and a number of other stress responses that can present differently in different plants. Epsom salt is used in commercial production to replace magnesium that has leached away and reverse the symptoms I've just mentioned. Home organic gardeners generally swap out the high intensity irrigation and synthetic fertilizers with things like composts and mulch. Composts and mulch add nutrients to the soil over time while reducing the evaporative losses through water, reducing your need to irrigate your garden as much. Because of these two factors, it's highly unlikely that in a home organic garden you actually have a magnesium deficiency. To test this out, let's look at the concentrations of magnesium in my soil. Last fall, as a part of the ongoing home garden field trials testing, Maxim Analytics analyzed for both available and unavailable forms of magnesium in my typical garden soil. The results showed more than sufficient concentrations of magnesium. Over time though, as we harvest crops, the levels of magnesium will lower, right? Let's take a look at the lab results for the free and local resources I commonly use in my garden. I had things like autumn leaves, used coffee grounds, and comfrey analyzed as a part of my ongoing work to test my own garden assumptions. I selected these materials because I commonly use them as ingredients for my compost and mulch. It should be no surprise because all plants require sizable amounts of magnesium that we found good concentrations in all three materials. So by adding these materials to your compost and mulch layers, your soils will be replenished as the materials slowly break down, releasing the elements into the nutrient cycle. The other way that you can have a magnesium deficiency is through what's called an imposed deficiency. This is generally speaking when you have sufficient quantities of something like magnesium in the soil, but your plant can't access them. Usually this happens when you have nutrient surpluses of things like phosphorus that interfere with the plant's ability to actually absorb the magnesium through the roots. Most imposed deficiencies in home gardens are as a result of the over-application of soil amendments. Although it is hard to do with things like homemade compost, store-bought products are often concentrated and make over-application much easier to inadvertently do. In cases where there is an imposed deficiency, adding more magnesium will likely not fix the problem and may result in the nutrients running off. The only way to identify an imposed deficiency is through soil testing. So now that we've established that most home organic gardens probably don't have a magnesium deficiency, what about the claim about fighting disease? There are some claims out there that the use of Epsom salt through a foliar spray will in fact fight diseases like blight. According to Dr. Linda Chocker Scott, a master gardener at Washington State University, there's absolutely no science behind the use of Epsom salts for any kind of disease control. A great resource summarizing the available research testing individual diseases is her information sheet on the matter. I'll post a link in the description below. So if there are plenty of sources of magnesium, and Epsom salt does not help to fight disease, what about increased yields and nutrient absorption claims? The soils in our trial showed surpluses of most nutrients. In the case of magnesium, it was well above any deficiency level that you could think of. 
If you are below that deficiency level, then you are going to have stress on your plant and reduce production. When nutrients are in surplus, the plant functions as intended, gaining little to no additional benefit from higher concentrations. In fact, nutrient surpluses may even cause impulse deficiencies. As an example of this principle, this year's Home Garden Field Trials biochar test bed had higher nutrient concentrations when compared to the rock dust bed. However, the yields and the elemental makeup of the produce were statistically identical. Generally speaking, improved flavor of produce is attributed to the sugar concentrations within the produce itself. When you allow, say, something like a tomato to ripen on the vine, the plant is able to put more sugar into the produce than one that is picked early to allow for shipping and ripen on the way. If you were to do a blind taste test on produce, where one was grown in a magnesium deficient state and the other is not, you may in fact detect a difference in the flavor. And this is likely attributed to the stress of the plant when it is in a magnesium deficient state. However, if you were to do the same blind taste test with say tomatoes grown in two different concentrations but both surplus, you're probably not going to be able to detect a difference in the flavor. Common anecdotal observations people have told me is the year that they started using Epsom salt, the flavor improved in crops like tomatoes. Unfortunately, in the absence of a side-by-side -side comparison, there are more factors that can explain why you had a great tasting crop this year past just the addition of Epsom salt. Changes in environmental conditions, like sun, water, heat, and soil, can all have impacts on how your plants grow and the flavor of their crops. Epsom salt can be used in the short term to alleviate magnesium deficiencies while you find a more sustainable long-term solution to this problem. However, the only way to actually know whether or not you have a magnesium deficiency is through soil testing. For other claims, there's no additional value for disease control, increased yield, improved flavor, or as a preventative or precautionary soil amendment. If you have any suggested practices or claims to be evaluated, please let me know. If you would like to catch up on the claims and practices we have tested, or the home garden field trials, there are links on the screen now. Thank you for spending time with me.